The first thing I need to do is grab an image that isn't stylized. So I'm gonna to try to find the right layer for that. Okay, it looks like this is the one. I'm going to right click it and duplicate it to its own file. Okay, here it is. And I'll just copy this. And ideally, we would have a bigger image, something that would scale well at higher resolutions. But this is what we have, and that's fine. So we'll save this for the web, and we'll call this author1, and we'll save it as a JPEG. Now let's go to our design, and let's scroll to the place where we would use these. All right, so it's going to be in these snippets. And let's open up our snippet partial. So we have that right here inside of our components. Let's go back to the browser. And we're going to need to add a new element here. So I'll go to the index.html. I'll do a quick search for snippet. Here we are. And I'll add a new element here. Now from an accessibility viewpoint, we have to ask ourselves some questions about what we're doing here. Images are a form of content, and even though people who are using screen readers aren't seeing the images, just the fact that it's an image tag tells them a lot about the role of that element. In this case, we're going to set the background of an element and not use an image element. So we're taking away some information that people who can see the page have. Now we've solved this problem in a couple other places, to some degree by adding a title tag, and that would make sense here as well. But a little later on when we review other accessibility things that haven't come up naturally throughout the series, we'll mention the fact that we can use ARIA tags in order to mark this as an image, even though it's a different element altogether. So I'm gonna set up a div here. We'll give it a class of snippet, and we'll call it author thumb, even though it's their face that's showing. And we'll just close this out without putting any content inside. While we're here, let's go ahead and add a title. So I think it would make sense to include the name of the author if we can. So we'll say Jeff Smitty's photo. And let's save this. And now let's go to our CSS. And let's add a new selector. Again, it's going to be snippet. So we're using the ampersand dash author thumb. All right. So it helps to think about where we're going to get our information once we populate this with real content. As we fill the template, we're probably going to be grabbing dynamic data from the server and plugging it into certain locations as variables. For example, the name of this author, the title of the snippet, and so on. The photograph of the user that we end up using will probably also be given to us in the same way. So while we could use that inside of this markup, it would be a lot harder to pull it into the CSS file. So in this case, we're going to use some inline CSS. Now we haven't done this since the very start of this series, but there are some use cases like this one where it actually makes sense. So here in this div, we're going to add a style attribute and we'll set the background image to URL. And then inside here, if we use quotes, they need to be different than the ones that we're using for the tag. So we're using double quotes for the outside of the tag. That means we need to use single quotes on the inside of the tag. And we'll point this to images, author1.jpg, and then we'll end the attribute here. So if we refresh the site, we're not gonna see anything yet because the div is empty, so it's not showing. And if we do a quick measurement of the size that this image should be in the mockup, let me do a quick measurement with the rectangular marquee. So it looks like it's about 81 pixels. We'll call it 80. I'll jump back to our styles here. So let's set a height of 80 pixels. And now should this be relative or not? I think that it makes sense to make this relative with the text. It's kind of a toss up, but these are small images. And my guess is that if the user is increasing the text in the browser, they'll also want to increase the size of small images so they can see those better. So let's pass this through the PX2 rem for a relative measurement. And we'll do the same thing for the width, okay? Let's save this and see if we can see it in the browser. Okay, there we go. 